Good evening. Welcome to Dispatch, the weekly show designed to keep you on track as you build and operate your layout. I'm Roy Smith, your dispatcher. Coming up on tonight's show, your layout photos, the question of the week, your comments, and a big shout out. Thank you for joining me tonight, whether you're here in the studio audience or out there somewhere in cyberspace. There's nothing I enjoy more than hanging out with my best friends in the whole world, you model railroaders. All right, first up on tonight's show, your layout photos. Each week I invite you to post photos of your layout in a Facebook group called the N-Scale Union Pacific Evanston Subdivision Group. And each week many of you do just that. And then I bring your photos over here to Dispatch to share with everyone during the show. So, once again, I have a bunch of layout photos to show you, and here they are. Now, when dispatch ends tonight, be sure to go over to the Facebook group, join the group, and post a photo of your layout there because we want to see what you're doing on your layout. It doesn't matter what scale you model in. I will put a link down below in the description to this video that will take you to the Facebook group. When you see this photo of Echo Canyon on my layout, you will know you're at the right place. Next up, the question of the week. Gary Wise suggested the question for this week. His question was, do you have a signaling system on your layout? Here's how you all responded to Gary's question. As you can see, a majority said you do not have a signaling system on your layout. However, many of you who said you don't have such a system also said that you may install one later on. You expressed concern about how complicated it might be to set up a signaling system. You also expressed concern about the time and money involved in doing so. You said it's difficult to know where to start. It's difficult to decide which system to install. Here's how Mark of m and Rails responded to this question. He said, I don't have a signal system. I use the yelling method. Slow your train down. Slower. Slower. Stop. Stop. Well, Mark, I like your method, but it sure does take those darn trains a long time to stop when you want them to. 
Me, well, I don't have a signal system on my layout either, but like so many of you, I would like to install one in the future. I have been studying this and trying to learn more about it. I certainly believe that it will help make my layout function more like a real railroad. It should make operations on my layout a lot more fun. But I still don't know what kind of hardware and software I need, and I still don't know what I actually need to do to make a signal system work like signals on a real railroad. Well, Gary, thanks for suggesting this question about signal systems. Your question certainly has given us something to think about and plan for. And now, the question for the coming week. Dean Danielson suggested the question for the coming week. The question that Dean has suggested is, how many hours, on average, do you spend working on your layout each week? I want you to post your responses to Dean's question in the comments down below, and then I will share your responses in Dispatch next week. Be sure to watch next week's show to see the answers to this question. Remember, the question for the coming week is, how many hours, on average, do you spend working on your layout each week? And now it's time for your comments. This past Saturday, I uploaded a video called How to Speed Match Your Locomotives. It was my third in a series of speed matching videos. In the video, I showed you how I go about speed matching my diesel locomotives using a circle of track and JMRI. Let's take a look at a clip from the video. Today, we're going to do some speed matching, and that's coming right up. Hi, I'm Roy Smith. This is the third in a three-part series about speed matching. If you haven't seen the first two parts, you can go back to them by clicking on the links down below in the description to this video. In parts one and two, I told you about the things I did to prepare my diesel locomotives for speed matching and how I set up a circle of track on which to do my speed matching. Speed matching isn't a pleasant task. So why do I do it? because I want to run multiple units at the head of my trains without all of that lurching and grinding that can occur when locomotives aren't speed matched. I was overwhelmed by the number of comments and suggestions that I received from you in response to this video. Here's what many of your comments related to. Speed matching the faster locomotive rather than the slower one as I did speed matching the entire fleet rather than just speed matching a pair of two locomotives together at a time as I did, and the challenges of using JMRI. Here's what a few of you had to say. Chris Mitchell wrote, Roy, I'm going to tell you, I'm still having a lot of trouble understanding JMRI, but also I have not gotten to any point of even trying it. In time, I hope to get there. I hear you, Chris. JMRI is difficult to understand at first, and it starts to become useful only after a long learning curve. I've barely started to learn how to use it myself, and I may never be able to use all of its many features. Jason Wood wrote, Great video. Thanks for sharing your experience with speed matching. Thank you, Jason. Hopefully we, and the manufacturers, can come up with a better way to speed match that will make it automatic or at least easier to do. There has to be a better way. And Andy Henley wrote, Even using the circle of track, it's still a terrible job to have to do, Roy. Most of the locals running on my Montrose and Highland Railroad run as singles as I dread speed matching. I don't even have JMRI, but I try and do it on my power cab on its own. I hear you, Andy. I have done some speed matching by adjusting the CVs on my power cab myself, and I was surprised to discover that it's just about as easy to do it there as it is to do it in JMRI. There are many, many more comments that deserve a response right here on Dispatch. But time is too limited for that. What I can do and would like to try to do is to put together a separate video responding in detail to more of your comments and suggestions. And I would like to post that video this coming Saturday. For most of us, speed matching is a difficult thing to do, and but it is something we need to do, like it or not, 
if we want to run our locomotives in multiple unit consists. Well, that's the plan, and hopefully I can follow through with the plan for Saturday morning. After that, we will move on to other topics of importance on Saturday mornings. For example, I went to install the rest of those switch cats in my staging yard, and I want to show you how important the staging yard is to operations on my layout. Also, I want to get to work on the long-neglected yard at Evanston. I want to thank all of you who responded to the video with your comments. Reading your comments is one of the best ways that I know of to learn more about the hobby because each of us has knowledge and experience to share. Now again, if you still haven't seen the video how to speed match your locomotives, I will put a link to it down below. Be sure to watch it after dispatch ends tonight. And now it's time for tonight's big shout out. And tonight's big shout out goes to David McDonald and his N-Scale Little River Railroad. I contacted David and he graciously provided me a lot of additional information about his layout. David lives in Melbourne, Australia. He told me that he started to build his layout in 2017. His wife bought him a Kato 844 excursion set during a trip to Japan, and with that he took the plunge into N-Scale. His layout room measures 10 feet by 11 and a half feet. That's roughly the same size as my layout room. David's layout proves that, once again, you can pack a lot of layout into a room when you model in N-Scale. David's layout is freelance, but the acquisition of 844 naturally moved him toward the Union Pacific to start off with. And then he discovered all the great rail fanning videos on YouTube, and he was attracted to the long Norfolk Southern coal trains. So he runs both railroads, the UP and NS, on his layout. Initially, he planned to build a single-level, shelf-style layout with a peninsula. But the more videos he watched, and the more he read, the more ideas he got, including the idea for putting his staging under the peninsula. He liked the idea of having a second level, but he didn't want to build a helix. So he decided instead to build a loop and a climb up and back the peninsula to get to his second level. His scenery for the main level of the layout will be the, the drier arid style that best suits the UP. And the upper level will be nice and green that suits the Norfolk Southern. David uses Atlas Code 55 track and is happy with it. His layout is powered by Digitrax DCC. He has kept operations in mind while building his layout, but he especially enjoys scenery work. Oh, and by the way, David says there are lots of places called Little River, but the name for Little River Railroad for his layout comes from his little Kelpie dog named River. David says he hadn't given it much thought before, but as he was sitting on the floor of his layout room recently, it dawned on him just how much work he has put into it so far. I really like David's layout. I'm especially fond of his track plan. I think you will like his layout too, so let's go over and take a look at what he's done so far. I have a round the walls layout, shelf type style layout with a central peninsula with five staging tracks underneath my peninsula. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it's all going at the moment. On one wall I have my, my main yard. If we come back around the wall, there goes my big intermodal. Without trying to give everyone motion sickness, there's my little GPs just sitting on a uh, on the yard lead. So, I have a single truss bridge there, so um, a lot of the layout there's um, options for moving, uh, for changing between tracks, but uh, this is the, the point here where everything has to go over that single bit of track on that bridge. On the far side here we have some more yards, a little stub end yard, where my SDs are sitting over the back there, that's on a track to or from a fictional destination or origin. Uh, that comes in over to this track in here um, and then over into my uh, concrete silos. My favourite feature of the layout at the moment is my peninsula with all the rock work that I've done. So you can see coming up the main there it drops into a siding which can be used as a, a passing loop if required. That comes around there and instead of being a passing loop you can actually hook left and then go up 
around the loop, around the rocks, and then up to the top. And that will eventually join up to the far corner there where the coal drags will come all the way down that wall, back over the door again, and up into my coal mine up there. Okay, you've seen a clip from one of David's recent videos right here on Dispatch. So now I want you to be sure to go over to his channel to see the rest of that video and other videos that he has posted there. Don't forget to subscribe while you're over there and tell him that Roy Smith sent you. I will put a link down below that will take you to his channel. And David, if you're out there somewhere watching this, I want to thank you for allowing me to share your layout with everyone here on Dispatch. Full steam ahead, my friend. We look forward to seeing your upcoming videos. Well, that just about concludes tonight's show, but I want to remind you to come back here every Tuesday night for Dispatch, in which I get to interact with you and which you are watching right now. And come back every Saturday morning for my layout updates. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't done it yet and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes on this channel. Now be sure to respond to the question for the coming week in the comments down below. And one last thing, there are now 187 videos on this channel. Be sure to go over and check them out. I'll put the link to my videos page down below. A big thank you to all of you who joined me tonight, both here in the studio audience and all of you out there on YouTube. There's nothing I enjoy more than hanging out with you. Until next time then, happy railroading. I'm Roy Smith and I will see you again very soon.